So lately, there's this new trend in liquid cultures using aeration as an agitation method. Is this better than the traditional stir bar method that's been around for about a decade or more? Let's find out. What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, I'm here in my lab in Sedalia, Colorado, and I wanted to explore liquid culture aeration versus liquid culture stir bar method. If you're interested in getting high quality liquid cultures that are vetted and procured by me, go check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. Link in the description below. What is the purpose of a stir bar in liquid culture for mushroom farming. So the stir bar acts as an agitator for the mycelium. So typically in a liquid culture, you'll have an isolated sterile culture that is growing in a three-dimensional matrix. If you don't agitate that, it could take months to fully colonize that jar. So by putting a magnet in the bottom before you sterilize your media, and then placing that on a magnetized motor, it will allow for the operator to stir the mycelium without entering that system, so keeping everything sterile. So that's the purpose of a stir bar. And then as that mycelium gets broken apart, it redistributes itself in the liquid media and it will start to grow out wherever it ends up in that media. So essentially, it's breaking apart the my mycelium and regrowing at those broken fissures. And then over time, that really speeds up the process. So it can cut what would take weeks or even months down to days. Some of the issues with a stir bar is that sometimes it might not be scalable. So there's different shapes and sizes of stir bars that you can use to address the volume of the vessel that you're growing in, but eventually you'll reach a limitation where it will be impossible to stir the culture at the top of the jar. So there are some carboys that are out there that are four or five gallons, and you can get these multi-tiered stir bars, but that is pretty much the limit of a stir bar in the uh, mycelium system. Other limitations might be after a certain point, it's going to not have the force to be able to stir that mycelium. So there might be limitations on the strength of the magnet. So these are some of the reasons why you might want to explore the alternative method, which is an aeration of liquid culture. Recently, there's been a bunch of videos going around with these really high intricate aerated liquid culture setups. One of the advantages of doing a aerated liquid culture is it's very scalable and it's very modular. So you can get one pump and attach multiple hoses to that single pump as opposed to one stir plate stirring one culture. So the same amount of energy that goes into stirring one culture will be able to aerate multiple cultures at once, which is why it's very appealing to farms that are growing lots of different varieties. Also, as air enters the system, it will displace any CO2 that might be building up by the metabolism of the mycelium inside of the culture. So this in turn helps speed up the growth and make the mycelium healthy in practice. Apart from speeding up the process and potentially making the mycelium more healthy, there's a major liability when it comes to aerating your liquid cultures. And this is that any contaminant can easily enter the system and be forced into the otherwise sterile mycelium through the pump. In order to mitigate this, you can add multiple air filters, 
make sure that your filters are at least 0.2 microns. So they'll be filtering out contaminants and make sure that you have redundancy in your filters. So if one fails, it's not going to ruin your whole system. Okay guys, so now that we've talked about the pros and cons of liquid culture aeration versus stir bar, I'm going to put this to the test. So I'm designing an experiment that I'm going to inoculate a brown oyster in a aerated liquid culture versus a stir bar liquid culture and grow them at the same time to see the differences between the two cultures. So I'm going to take pictures every day or every few days until there's an obvious difference in growth. And then we'll get a final conclusion on whether or not aeration or stir bar is better for growing mushrooms. So this is almost two weeks in. You can see there's definitely some larger flakes forming. You can see this one starting to get some growth around where the air pocket is. All right guys, it's been one month since I started the experiment between the aeration and the stirring technique for agitating liquid culture. It appears like the stir bar has definitely had more effect on the growth. So it seems, you know, in this comparison, the stir bar after about a month started to really break up that mycelium into its own colonies where if you can see in the uh, the aerated liquid culture, it doesn't appear to be contaminated, but it does have larger, big globular growth. So I think that in conclusion, um, maybe adding stirring to the aeration will help even more. Um, I can easily just swap this onto the stir plate and I think that there's just going to be improvements made, you know, over the development of this procedure. So you can see the larger mycelium that's floating, but I would like to tweak this tubing, maybe add more holes for um, more agitation and maybe try um, pop placing this, maybe trying to place this on the stir bar so that you get the benefits of both. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video on aeration versus stir bar for liquid cultures. Go check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi, if you're looking for a variety of liquid cultures. The link's in the description below. Until next time, much love.